welcome to our virtual studio, Lizzo. Good afternoon, Babawa. Thanks for having me this afternoon. It's a pleasure. Really great to, to chat about um, construction and health and safety. It's a pleasure. Thank you for making the time for us. Um, I understand your involvement in the energy sector is in the construction of projects. Um, what was your initial reaction when the national uh, lockdown was announced? So when the announcement was made um, late March, um, I wasn't surprised at all. Um, the, by the mere fact that COVID-19 had been around in the, in the world since December um, and had been spreading from China over into Europe, and having a look to see on the news what each country was going through. I knew that it was a matter of time before it hit South Africa. Mm -hmm. And so it was not necessarily a surprise when it got to South Africa, but it was also not a surprise that our government would have followed suit like many of the other governments around the world um, and institute some form of a lockdown. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it was something to be expected. I do agree with you. Um, can you briefly just take us through the health and safety measures that were put in place before the pandemic and how these measures now have been um, amended, if I could say that, or sure. modified? Yeah. So, okay. So before the pandemic, or at least before the lockdown was announced in South Africa, as an organization, we had taken a number of measures to at least minimize and reduce, or firstly, at least to be aware of if there was any potential risk that could come into our organization uh, due to the fact that we had a number of international visitors um, that visit us either in the office or at any of our sites. And so we needed to be aware of any potential risk through that particular um, avenue of people coming into the business through visitors or contractors. Mm. And so at that moment, before the lockdown was announced, we had already initiated with measures. And so this included things like screening our visitors before they came in. There was a list of questions they needed to complete um, prior to them visiting our office. There was a number of awareness sessions we had with our staff where we engaged with them to at least start informing them about COVID-19 and what were some of the, the impacts of it. Um, so that was what we had begun with. And at the beginning, we also started to understand what were the risks to our business and actually start documenting that so that we could start preparing and planning for it. Once the national lockdown was then announced, we then went one step ahead and actually started implementing some of the issues we had planned for as part of our risk assessments and risk strategies that we 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 had foreseen mm -hmm. and with that um it it really escalated our um, our efforts to not only screen visitors more but also staff who were traveling within the country. And so at the moment when we got our first 10 COVID positive cases within the country, we really started to initiate the um, plans that we had put in place. And um, with that upped the amount of awareness and training, not only for our staff, but we then got into conversations with our contractors so that they could do the same. Impressive work that you guys were doing prior to uh, the, the announcement and also now going forward. It sounds like you were really prepared. That's very commendable, Lisa. Um, I want to know, um, will there be any changes now in the process of procuring com components and to getting them on site? And if so, how will these, will, how will these affect the, com uh, the completion of projects? So I must say that for the projects that, that I um, am directly related to, the, we were very lucky that we had been able to procure the majority of our components 
pre-lockdown and that the components were already on the site before the lockdown. So, you know, good planning. We were able to get most of the most of the equipment onto site before lockdown. And so um, there wasn't too much of, of an impact with regards to procuring of components. There were one or two things that we might have had to procure, um, you know, sort of during the lockdown or post the lockdown. And, and in those certain circumstances, we would have proceeded with that under very strict risk control measures. So it was really understanding what were the risks around that, how would we be able to procure it and move it safely. But all of that was done in conjunction with the authorities and ensuring that we had the necessary permits in place mm -hmm. and the allowance within the regulations under the relevant lockdown alert levels. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good job you guys are doing um, and keep up the good work and also the positive spirits. Um, just on a personal note, what are your hopes for the industry going forward? The wind industry particularly? Particularly the, the wind industry. So I, my, my hopes for the future is that, um, that we build more um, wind farms and that with that we are able to not only increase the number of um, or access to, to more cost-effective electricity, but that the locations of where the wind farms are based, that it also provides an opportunity to increase the local economic development within the communities. And so it would be good to see that happening on a more regular basis, um, at a faster pace, um, and so that's literally what my what my um, personal outlook and view would be, you know, to to for, for the wind industry mm -hmm. in the future. I think also from a specifically from a health and safety perspective, it would be good to really start looking at what are the key trends around the things that could possibly go wrong, looking at what are the things that could go right, what are the learnings we could share amongst ourselves to make the operation and the construction of these wind farms a lot more smoother. Mm. Such a positive outlook from your side. Uh, Lisa, thank you for sharing your personal insights and thank you to our viewers for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel now for more Gender Lens and other expert interviews.